Hi, my name is Amy Heisey. This is my cat Scully, and today I'm going to be walking you through how to draw a simple St. Catherine of Siena. Her feast day is on April 29th, and I'm going to be showing you how to draw her using simple lines and simple shapes. For this project, you need a piece of paper, a pencil, and something to color with. So at the top of my paper, I'm going to start off with an oval. You can do any shape head that you want. It does not have to match mine. So the next thing we're going to do is we are going to draw her neck. So at the bottom of her oval shape, we're going to draw two lines that come straight down, one on the left side and one on the right side. The bottom of her neck is kind of pointed like the letter V, so I'm going to draw one line coming in towards that side and one line coming in like that. The next thing we're going to do is we are going to put in two long lines for her shoulders and arms. So I'm going to have one start right above that V shape and it's going to come out towards the left like this and I'm going to do another line going off towards the right and I chose to have her arms out and off to the side because St. Catherine of Siena was a really dynamic person and so I wanted her to have a dynamic pose. All right, sorry about that. So the next thing we're going to do is we are going to be putting in her hands. So her hands are kind of out and we're going to be creating kind of like a mitten shape to create the main shape of her hand. So because her hands are out, her thumbs are going to be up. So kind of where those lines ended, I'm going to start off with a small U line and that's the line for the thumb and I am going to be doing a longer u-line for the other fingers that are coming out like so and I'm going to have it come around and connect to the back so it looks kind of like a mitten shape and we're going to do the same thing on the other side we're going to start off with a little u shape and this is going to be for the thumb and we're going to do a bigger U shape for the main shape of the remaining fingers. And that's going to curve around and connect. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna take a break from her hands and we're actually going to start to work on this cloak that she's wearing. So at the bottom of that point, of the V shape, I'm going to do two curved lines. One is going to come off towards the right and it's going to stop just before the end of her sleeve. So it's kind of like a smile line. And then I want to do another smile line over here coming from that point down at the bottom and connecting over here. So those curves are creating the top part of her cloak. Then what we're going to do is we're going to create these side lines. They're kind of um, angled downwards and they flare down at the bottom. And that's going to create the width of her robe. So we want to have her chest be um, kind of fit in this space right here. So that's going to be where her chest is going to start. So I'm going to start off with one line coming down towards the left and stop. And then I'm going to have another line come down in towards the right. We're going to connect it at the bottom with a wavy line. So starting over here, I'm going to move my pencil up and down and that makes it look like her robe is nice and flowy down at the bottom. To finish it off, we're gonna add two more lines. They're parallel to the line on the left, and I'm just gonna stop before I hit the bottom, and I'm going to add another line over here on the right and stop before I hit the bottom. 
Now that the main shape of her robe is drawn out, we're gonna go back to finishing up the sleeves. So the sleeves have this big curve. So we have this kind of diagonal line coming down from where her robe is and it kind of comes up in a curve where her hand is. So over here near the top, I'm going to start off with a diagonal line like this and then I'm going to connect it by adding a slightly curved line that comes up towards the hand. So it kind of reminds me of like a big swoosh. We're gonna do the same thing on this side. You're going to start off with a diagonal line going towards the right. And then we're going to curve that bottom of the sleeve and have it connect to her hand. To create the opening of the sleeves, we are gonna put in two lines. One line is gonna stop just before we hit the bottom of the sleeve. That creates the opening. And then we're going to add another line here at the bottom edge of the sleeve and that creates kind of like a cuff. We're going to do the same on this side. So we're going to have one part of the sleeve that's a little bit open so it does not connect to the bottom but the other one is going to go all the way from the top of the sleeve to the bottom. We can separate her hands into individual fingers. So I'm going to add one, two, three lines, and that separates that space into four fingers. And I'm gonna do the same on this side. I'm going to add one, two, three lines and that separates that into four fingers. We're going to finish off this cloak that she's wearing. So right here on the sleeve, I'm going to have a line that comes down close to where the bottom of her skirt is. I have one on the left and I'm going to be doing one on the right. And I'm going to do a wavy line and stop when I hit the robe. So I'm gonna do another wavy line and stop. We're gonna be working on her habit next. So we're going to start by doing this opening where her face is. So inside of this oval shape that we put in earlier, you're going to start off with a line kind of like the letter U. So it's matching the same curves as the bottom of your oval shape. But we're stopping before we reach the top. The reason we're stopping is because we're going to add a slightly curved line like a frown or like a rainbow and that's going to create that top part. So right where I stop, I'm just going to draw a slight curve line, like a frown or like a rainbow. And that is creating that top opening of her habit. We're going to be doing a big frown or rainbow shape to create this main part of her habit. So I'm going to start kind of near where her cloak is and I'm gonna come up to the top of her head and I'm going to come down on the other side like this. And I want to do another curve. And this time I'm going to come up into that oval shape that I did for her head like so, but continue on the opposite side. I have these remaining pencil lines that I no longer need, so I can just erase those, but that finishes off the main shape of her habit. We're going to be working on her face next. So somewhere near the middle of her head, we are going to be putting in her eyes. And I am choosing to do two simple circles, but you can do any kind of eye shape that you wish. I'm gonna do a smaller circle on the inside to create a highlight. And I'm gonna add some eyelashes. I'm going to add some curves for her eyebrows. So one above each eye. And in between where her eyes and where her chin are, 
right in the middle, I'm going to put a small curve, and this is going to be for the bottom of her nose. I'm going to add a up and down line that creates the bridge of her nose. And then in this space in between her nose and her chin, I'm going to draw a bigger smile line for her mouth. I'm gonna add one more smaller smile line underneath to create a hint of her bottom lip. Sometimes in artwork, you'll see St. Catherine of Siena with a crown of thorns wrapped around her head, and sometimes you don't. Other times you'll see her with the stigmata on her hands, and sometimes you don't see that either. As artists, we get to make choices. So if there's something that you want to add to your picture that I didn't show you, you can make any changes or additions that you'd like. Maybe you want her holding a letter or a quill or a cross. Maybe you wanna give her a halo. You can make any changes that you wish to yours. I would start kind of near the top of her head and I'm kind of bringing a line up and over. I think kind of like the letter C or like a parenthesis. And once I get towards the top of her habit, I'm going to create a wavy line. I'm just gonna move my pencil up and down until I get to the other side and I go just past the edge of her head and I'm going to create a curve on this side. And that creates the main um, wavy shape of that crown of thorns. Each thorn is kind of like the point of a triangle. So you can add as many or as few triangle points as you wish onto different parts of that wavy line to create the different thorns. So I have a bunch of little triangle points going lots of different directions. After you finish getting your lines just the way you like, we're gonna work on coloring our piece. So I'm gonna be using markers because that's what shows up well on camera. And when I use markers, I like to outline my pencil drawings using a black pen, kind of like this. You, of course, can use any art supplies that you wish. So you can color along with me. Feel free to skip ahead to match my coloring if you wish. Thank you so much for drawing along with me. I would love to see how your St. Catherine of Siena drawings turned out. Feel free to tag me on social media. If you enjoyed following along with today's tutorial, know that I post weekly Catholic inspired art tutorials every week. Another way that you can help support my channel is you can buy me a coffee. I want to remind you that you are loved. God loves you very much and he loves your artwork very much. Thank you so much for drawing along with me and I'll see you in the next video.